In this video, we're going to be discussing all the different types of diesel fuel systems you're likely to run into as a mechanic. Hey guys, this is Josh with the Adept Ape channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing the different types of diesel fuel systems out there. Now, whether you're working on a Caterpillar, a Cummins, a Detroit, a John Deere, a Volvo, they're all pretty much going to have one of a few types of fuel systems out there. Now, there might be some weird off-the-wall fuel system that I'm unfamiliar with or used to exist back in the 1940s or something, but pretty much any diesel engine you're going to run into nowadays is either going to have a mechanical pump, a mechanical unit injector system, an electronic unit injector system, Huey system, or the most popular currently, which is the common rail fuel system. Now, this is not a troubleshooting video. This is actually a education video on just the different types of fuel systems, how they operate, the differences between them, what engines you'll find them in. And I'm gonna be using Caterpillar, of course, that's my area of expertise. And we're gonna be using them as examples, but this could carry over to all the other engine manufacturers out there. Now, I'd like to start making more videos like this that are discussing not just a specific how do you remove an injector in let's say a C7, but an actual broad understanding of the concepts of the systems themselves. So if you like this style of video, please click the like button. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. And if you're not already, please subscribe to the videos. All right, thank you. So the first type we're gonna be discussing is the tried and true mechanical fuel pump fuel system. Now these use nozzles, not injectors and there's quite a difference nozzles are much cheaper this is a pencil style nozzle as you can see due to the pencil thinness at the tip there there are also different types of nozzles there are pre-combustion chamber ones and they're usually much smaller but these are very common this is 3406 b and this 3406 b is a mechanical fuel pump you can tell because it has a large pump there are fuel lines running from the pump through the head on this one to each individual nozzle and on the back is the governor housing this style of fuel system is very old they've been using it for several decades and you can still find diesels around with it this is a 3208 and you can also see that it is a mechanical fuel pump system because you have your fuel pump you can see your throttle linkage there and it has fuel lines running from it here's a cat 3306 also mechanical fuel pump system now, looking at the pump, that's where the cam is, what we're looking at here with the governor housing removed is the rack. And the rack controls how much fuel each little pump internal to the main fuel pump supplies how much fuel to each nozzle. And you can see the rack moving here. And that's really what controls your fuel. Your throttle linkage is controlled to the governor, connected to the governor. And even though these are pre-electronic that doesn't mean they're very simple this is a cutaway or a diagram of the timing advance unit on the front of a 3406b fuel pump as you can see a lot of moving components in there this is the diagram of the governor assembly there's a lot of springs counterweights settings there's a lot to these pumps the pumps are very expensive and here's a diagram of the internal. So you can see where the arrow's pointing. That's the actual plunger, or some people call them pumps. You can see the camshaft. The cam is what times and moves each pump internal to the main fuel pump. Now, in order to shut off a mechanical fuel pump system, you need a fuel shutoff solenoid, which we're looking at right here. And when you turn the key off, that basically forces the rack to zero fuel and shuts your fuel system off. Now, these systems were used for a long time. You can still find them around today. Uh, the nozzles are much cheaper than injectors on newer engines, but the pumps are very complex and they are very expensive. Now, there's another type of mechanical fuel system, but it doesn't have a pump. Now, you might be saying, well, this looks like it has a pump. It's actually a governor. This is a 3116. And this is considered a mechanical unit injector system. So this governor, all it is is a small transfer pump. So it supplies fuel to the cylinder head and it has a governor. The rack on this, according to this diagram, is actually under the valve cover. The rack is 
in the engine. So there's no timing in the pump. All it is is the rack has moved from the pump to inside the engine. And by moving that rack, it's going to move a scroll that is on the mechanical unit injector, which you can see here. And what that does is that tells the injector how much fuel to supply to each cylinder. Now you can also see it as a spring. That's because it relies on the camshaft, the valve camshaft, to push down on that spring to create enough pressure to fire the injectors. Now these systems weren't just on 3116s. This is a 3512. This is a later one, but the A models of this engine, the earlier ones, they actually had a mechanical unit injector set up. So they would have a rack that ran several feet the length of the block and it would tell each injector how much fuel to fire. Now this engine is a 3406E and you could say the E is for electronic because as you can see there's no high pressure fuel pump here. Under the uh, air compressor there's nothing there other than a power steering pump. And so what they did is instead of using a high pressure pump they kind of incorporated the mechanical unit injector system. Now there's still a fuel system, you still have fuel lines, this is just the fuel filter housing and these fuel lines supply about 70 psi of fuel to the cylinder head and the way it does that is there's a small mechanical fuel transfer pump this doesn't have to be timed all it is is it's supplying fuel to the cylinder head and it's just a twin gear pump and what that fuel in the head does is it supplies that 70 psi to each injector the injector then relies on the camshaft as you can see there are three rocker arms per cylinder this is a c12 engine but very similar to the c15 we we're just looking at a 3460 and that injector rocker arm, the center one the larger one pushes down on the injector and these are electronic unit injectors now i'm going to disassemble this so you can kind of see what i'm talking about so the injector's in the center here and it has a very large push rod you'll see the difference between the valve and the injector push rods there and you can see that there are wires going to a solenoid that is connected to the injector. And that solenoid is controlled by the electronic control module. The electronic control module tells the injector when to fire. The camshaft simply su supplies enough mechanical force to push down on the spring to create pressure. But the injector firing timing is controlled by the ECM. Now we're going to pull this injector out and you can see it's much bigger than the nozzles we were looking at before. So you have your main unit injector body here. You have the tips on the bottom. It's got some O-rings to seal the fuel manifold in the head. It has the solenoid on the front and the spring. I'll show you a better picture of a cleaner one off of 3406E. So this is a 3406E slash C15 one. You can see there are three sets of O-rings. The larger O-rings right here they seal the fuel manifold which runs through the head so there's actually fuel being supplied to the injector the camshaft pushes down on the spring which creates force and pressure and then the ECM tells it when to fire now here we have a C15 running at idle and you can see the action of the rocker arms pushing down you can see the valves opening as well but if you look in the the large spring in the center that is your injector rocker arm pushing down on the injector. Like I said, that's supplying the force to build the fuel pressure, several thousand PSI, and then the ECM is telling it when to fire. So these electronic unit injector systems are very common on the heavier duty engines, C15s, I believe the older ISXs used to use these, the Cummins. The injectors are very expensive, but these injectors can last up to a million miles. Now, what we're looking at here is a Huey system, and these are somewhat complex. These are very common on internationals and the smaller cats for a very long time. And what you're looking at is a Huey system is hydraulic electronic unit injector. So you have a rail, and this pump I'm pointing at there is a Huey pump. And you can see the rail right there. It supplies high pressure oil. We're talking several thousand PSI, up to about 4,000, to the injectors. You can see the injectors here, and there's a line. This is an early model Huey that would supply that oil to the injector. Now, the injector still had fuel going to it, obviously, but the Huey system would use the high-pressure oil to build pressure in the injector to fire each injector. And you can see the early model 
Huey injector here. It looks kind of weird. The solenoid's off to the side. This has a single O-ring because the oil supply to the top, so it had a fuel rail in the cylinder head that would supply fuel, about 60, 70 PSI to the injector, and then it would use the high pressure oil to fire the injector. Now this is a C7 injector, so this is a Huey injector that's slightly older. You can see the solenoid has shrunk down considerably from the earlier model ones. And instead of a line going to it, it has three sets of O-rings. So what we're looking at here is where oil is supplied to the injector through a port in the head, and then between the bottom O-ring and the center O-ring, where the screen is, fuel is supplied. So you have fuel being supplied around 70 PSI, and then where the oil was supplied, you're getting anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 PSI of oil pressure. Now, there's a lot of ports. There's a lot going on in a Huey injector, and these injectors are not the best in cold starting conditions, and they're very sensitive to clean oil. They can be really short-lived injectors if the oil is not taken care of properly. The good thing is, is the overhead's very simple on a Huey system because since oil supplying the force for the injectors, you, you do not have fuel or oil lines anywhere. You just have an intake exhaust rocker arm and the injector itself. It's very easy to change Huey injectors. And the Huey system can be somewhat complex to understand at first, so we're going to kind of talk about it a little bit. So this is a diagram for a CAT C7 Huey system, and the pump that's on the left is your Huey pump. And on the back of the Huey pump, you have a fuel transfer pump, and that's what supplies the low side pressure fuel. So basically what we're looking at is we have our Huey pump here. It is supplied with normal oil pressure from the oil system. We're talking about 40 PSI of oil pressure. That high pressure oil is sent from the Huey pump to the injectors about a thousand to four thousand psi on the back of the Huey pump you have your fuel line that takes fuel pressure up to about 70 and that supplies fuel pressure to the injectors as well so the Huey systems were used on a lot of the Navistar and International products they were used on the cats 3126s and C7s and C9s up till 2007 they had a lot of early injector failures due to contaminated oil, mostly metal in the oil, or the Huey pump failing can wipe out all of your injectors. So they did have some issues with that. Now, after the Huey system, at least on the smaller cats, they went to what pretty much everyone runs now, and that is a common rail fuel system. So what we're looking at here is the rail. And you can see there's fuel lines, and what we're looking at here is the solenoids on top of the common rail fuel pump high pressure we're talking up to 40,000 psi on some of these engines and it each injector will have a fuel line that runs from the common rail to each injector now it doesn't go directly to the injector it goes through something called a quilt tube now you can see the injectors are very small they're electronically controlled now this is a c9s so this is a common rail system you can see the injector line going through there and I'm going to be showing you the quill tube. I'm going to be removing the injector and showing you a common rail injector. Now, the reason they switched to a common rail system on pretty much all engines now is mostly the high pressure common rail system allows for very easy starting in all climates, all conditions. Also, the very high pressure allows for very precise timing. Now, you can see the quill tube here. This is what supplies the fuel from the fuel line and then into the injector. This runs through the cylinder head and it feeds through the tip to the injector. Now, you can remove the injector once the quill tube and the hold down bolt are out and you'll see it's, it looks somewhat similar to a Huey injector. However, there's usually only two O-rings and the reason for that is it doesn't have a Huey port in the head, it only has fuel. Now there's usually a bottom third injector, that's just to seal the combustion chamber. You can see how the quill tube works here. Basically just metal to metal seals right against there. And you wouldn't be able to use really an O-ring or anything to seal that due to the high pressure. And that high pressure allows it very precise timing and multiple firings per injection cycle, goal, which allows for better emission controls. Now. This is very prevalent nowadays. Pretty much all engines are using this system currently, at least in the truck side. And the problems with the common rail systems are the injectors and the fuel pump are very sensitive to debris. They're not quite as robust as the old mechanical pumps where you could run a little dirt or 
high sulfur fuel. It can damage these very sensitive components. Most of that has to do with just very small ports. Not only that, it has extremely high pressures which can damage it. So that's my video on the different types of diesel fuel systems that are out there. Now, is there a best fuel system? It's highly subjective. You could say that the common rail system is the most efficient, but I would say it's not quite as robust when it comes to maybe perhaps longevity or the ability to have contaminants run through it. Electronic unit injectors are very robust, but they require specialized camshaft. They're heavier. The injectors are very expensive. You could say the old mechanical style pumps with their very cheap nozzles could perhaps be the best but then you have a very complex fuel pump and the fuel pump parts are very expensive and the fuel pump itself is very expensive. So is there a best, is there a worst? It's really your opinion. Some people have had very good luck with Huey systems. Some people have had very bad luck with Huey systems. It's, it's really just the state of the current fuel systems out there and the fuel technology, I would say. There isn't necessarily a best fuel system, at least in my opinion, okay? Hope you enjoyed the video and you learned a little bit. Thanks for watching.